And today, today, we're going to kick off a new series that we created that uh, we're very excited about. It's called Now and Then, and it'll feature interesting people, places, and things here and around Richmond more than 50 years before Rosa Parks gained national attention. Richmond, a famous Richmonder, had uh, an idea kind of similar. He was a newspaper man and a trailblazer with a great idea. And this piece, I take you to the place where it all happened. Take a look. John Mitchell Jr. was born July the 11th, 1863 to slave parents on Henrico County's Paradise Plantation. The site where later the Richmond Memorial Hospital would be built, which is where we are right now. John became a Richmond school teacher until a new city regulation against black male school teachers forced him to start a new career. In 1883, a Yale educated politician, Edmund A. Randolph, founded the Richmond Planet newspaper with several former teachers and activists. John Mitchell was named editor. It was a position he would hold for the next 45 years. An 1890 newspaper editorialist from Indiana praised Mr. Mitchell as daring to hurl thunderbolts of truth into the ranks of the wicked. Which brings us to April 19th, 1904, where Mr. Mitchell met at a historic place that is now basically a vacant lot, the True Reformers Society, and he was hurling truths that night. It's here where the crowd heard a thunderbolt speech against the Virginia Passenger and Power Company who decided that passengers on the city trolleys would now be separated by race. John Mitchell said no act since the close of the Civil War had tended to arouse a more bitter antagonism. John then drove home the point through the pages of the Richmond Planet with his slogan, Let Us Walk, and thousands did just that. Mitchell was so popular that in 1921, he ran for governor on a ticket with the one and only Maggie Walker. The Richmond Convention Center sits on the spot where John Mitchell had his home here on North 3rd Street. December 3rd, 1929, the fighting editor, John Mitchell, died in his home here on North 3rd Street. His beloved newspaper was purchased and became the African-American and Planet and lasted until 1996. Today, the Richmond Free Press carries on Mr. Mitchell's vision and dedication to the city and its citizens. You know, it's interesting. I learned so much. I started on this so we could run it during a Black History Month and I learned so much. And one thing that you may have missed there was that he had to start a new profession because the city passed a rule that African-American men could not teach children. Mm. And the most of the newspaper staff were former teachers. And uh, obviously this injustice moved forward because of what had happened there and all the other injustices during Jim Crow period and, and all of that. But uh, Coming up in the future, Jess, we have another famous Richmonder that was forced to start a new career because of that same rule. It's it's a fantastic job, Mr. Bevins. I'm so excited to begin to learn more now and then and, and see where we are. One thing that really struck me too, especially as we talked about getting this project together and, and what Tom mentioned earlier, seeing some of these spaces where influential individuals in our community, maybe were born or furthered their career or just lived life. And in two of those spots, was it Richmond Memorial Hospital and then the convention mm -hmm. center are directly yep. over top of some of these incredibly historic spaces. So I don't know if it was that conversation I had the other day with historic Richmond that made me think about how important it is to preserve some of these spaces so that we can tell these stories. But I'm really glad that you're developing a, a list so that we can learn more. <laughs> the, the first place we went to, which was Richmond Memorial Hospital when I was researching it, and they said he was born to slave parents on the Paradise 
plantation. And I'm going like, uh, what a <laughs> interesting, <laughs> weird way to look at things from a different point of view. It's like, I'm sure it wasn't paradise for a lot of the folks there, but, um, and it's so close in. I mean, it's right on, you know, right off the boulevard over on Northside just a little bit. So uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, a real lesson. And I've lived here all my life, never heard of John Mitchell Jr. So uh, I was, uh, that was a special part of it. Um, before we get uh, wrap this up, big thank you to Virginia This Morning editor, Remy Cox for her hard work. She's new to our team. And uh, I don't know if this was her first big undertaking, but man, she hit it out of the park. What a great job, Remy. Thank you so much for your help with our new series. She's incredibly talented, as are you, Mr. Bevins, and I'm really glad that we have the opportunity to learn about such influential individuals in our community. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yep. Yeah. Stay with us, friends. We'll be right back after this.